All right, welcome back. We Well, not welcome back. Welcome to the second part of Lesson 5.1, where we're dividing and dealing with remainders this time. Um, you'll need red and yellow out. You'll need to put the date in the date box, and then push pause on the video until it gets set up like this. Okay, we're going to solve 6,945 divided by 7. And we're going to do this using place value sections or place value boxes to begin with. So if you remember, we draw a big box for the first one. We leave the divisor on the outside and draw the dividend inside with no commas. And we space all the numbers out. 7 will not go into 6. And so you have to move over. But 7 will go into 69. So you could put a little x above the 6. And then just know that that's where you're starting is above the 9. 7 goes into 69 9 times, which is 63. So put a 9 up here. But before I write the 63, I need to make sure when I'm doing the division this way, that I place zeros for place holding. So see how there's a place here above the four and there's a place here above the five. So seven times nine is 63, but you have two zeros with it. So it's 6,300 and I write that underneath, no commas. I subtract to find the leftovers. 645 is my new dividend, so I move it into a new box. The divisor is still 7. 7 won't go into 6, so you place an X above the 6. You just start the process all over again. 7 goes into 64 9 times, because that would be 63, but you have a 0 as well, so it's 90 times. 7 goes into 645 90 times, and it's 63 with a 0, so you write it under the 645. And you subtract to find the leftovers. And you start all over again. This time all that's getting moved over is 15. 7 is still the divisor. And this is not going to be pretty, means it's not going to be perfect. It won't end in a 0 down in the bottom. But 7 can go into 15 twice. It can't go into 1, so you don't put a digit there. You put it above the 5. And you'll find that you have some remaining. So this is where you have to stop and think. So I want you to draw a stop sign. And make sure it's red. Stop and think about this. Do I need to draw another place value box? No, because the number, the leftovers, is smaller than the divisor. So I'm going to write when the leftovers are smaller than the divisor. You are done. When the leftovers are smaller than the divisor, you are done, and that is your remainder. Will you then circle the word remainder with yellow? And also go up into the place value box where we had one left over and circle the actual remainder one in yellow. So 
So to get your final answer, you still have to add up the partial quotients. So I do 992. But now I, and I have some left over. I have a remainder of one. And in fourth grade, you probably learned this, where you just get to write a little R and, a, and the number. Well, I'm going to leave it as 99 or 992 remainder one. That is a great way for you to put an answer when you're in fourth grade. Okay, here is how Miss Fisher wants this answer when you're in fifth grade. I want you to change it to a fraction. So you keep all of the quotient, which is 992, and you take your remainder, and that becomes the numerator. And does anybody know what the denominator is? I'll give you a hint. We've been using the number a lot. It's on there multiple times. It's the divisor, which in this case is seven. So the denominator is seven. So we're gonna really small right next to the one. The one is the remainder. That's what the numerator is. And the denominator is the divisor. That's how you get the fraction. Because it took seven for there to make a whole. So if I have one out of the seven left over, I can't make another whole. I therefore have a fraction. One out of seven is one seventh. So 992 and one seventh is how I would like this answer as a fifth grader. Later we'll learn how to convert it into a decimal. So there's three different ways to put your answer. But right now you need to know the fourth grade way, which is to write the little remainder with a little r. The fifth grade way is to keep the quotient, which is 992, but to change the remainder into a fraction. So keep the remainder as the numerator, and the divisor is the denominator. Pretty cool. That looks pretty awesome. Let's take it and go like this with the yellow. What if I had a remainder of two? Would that still work? Sure. What about three or four or five? Yes. Or six? Yes. What if I had a remainder of seven? That wouldn't really make sense because I would have remainder seven or 992 and seven sevenths, which is just another whole. So you can't have a remainder that is more than your divisor. Let's put that with a star. You can never have a remainder that is more than the divisor. I should say greater than, but more than is fine. If you do end up having a remainder that's bigger than the divisor, you did something wrong. It means that you might have done a division mistake early on, or maybe when you were multiplying to get a product, you got it wrong, or maybe when you subtracted, you made some errors. But if you get to the end and that remainder is equal to or greater, oh, I should, I should put that in here. You can never have a remainder that is more than the divisor. I should say or equal to it. Or equal to it. It can't be equal to it either. Okay. Let's try another one like this. Let's try... 9,560, so slide your journal down. We're gonna write this diagonal. Divided by nine. That's gonna be the problem we work on. 9,560 divided by nine. And we're gonna do place value sections. Guess what, when we turn the page, we get to go back to standard algorithm with division and making sure that you understand how to do that, um, especially how to do it Miss Fisher's way. Because you'll never guess this, but it's more work. Okay, so let's draw our first box. This 
the divisor is 9, the dividend is 9560. Space all the numbers out right at the top. And go through the division process. Nine will go into nine. So that is where the first number goes. Nine goes into nine once. So you write a one above the nine. You fill in all these rest of the place values with zeros because this makes more sense. Nine goes into 9,560 a thousand times and some more. So what was nine times a thousand? So I can find out what my leftovers are. So it's 9,000, you write it underneath and subtract it. So then I get 560 and I start the next place value box. Nine is still the divisor. So I start the process all over. Nine won't go into five, so I place a little X there. But nine will go into 56 six times, which would be 54. But you have a zero here that you have to fill the space on top. So nine times six is 54, but then you have a zero, so it's 540. Write it underneath and subtract. interesting. Whoops, I just did the subtraction wrong. But look, we have in our um, quotient, we have a thousands place, and then we jump to the tens place. We don't actually have a hundred place value, which means when I write this number, I'm going to have a zero in the quotient because it went from thousands to tens. So I'll have a zero for the hundred. Anyway, pretty cool. Okay, so write the new leftovers in the new box, which is 20. Nine goes into two, nope. Nine goes into 20, twice. So no above the two. And the next method would be for me to draw another place value box, right? Because I have some leftover, but you have to check the leftover. Look, I already got to the ones place in my answer. So I don't need to draw another box. That little two is the remainder. So I'm going to circle it in yellow and make sure that it's smaller than the divisor, which was nine, and it is. So I have my quotient. My quotient is the numbers on top. My remainder is the number left over, and it has to be smaller than the divisor. So I want you to be clear about that. A remainder is not your quotient. The quotient is the whole numbers, and the remainder is the pieces left over. So my final answer, I have 1,062. If you just write 162, that's going to be 162. So you have to write it as 1,000. There are no hundreds. There's a 6 in the tens place and a 2 in the ones place. And then I have a remainder. And now you need to write it as a fifth grader. So all of the quotient stays the same. The remainder becomes the numerator. And what is my denominator? It's the divisor. What did I keep dividing by? Or how many would make a whole? Nine would make a whole. And I only had two, so it's two ninths. So the answer to this one is 1,062 and 2 ninths. It's a pretty fun way to do division when you have remainders. I actually really like remainders. Um, in both of these, we didn't have to simplify the fraction. Sometimes you'll need to simplify the fraction. So let's write that underneath here. Sometimes when you have remainders as fractions
you will need to simplify the fraction. It hasn't happened yet. We're going to put that in a red cloud. But sometimes when you have remainders as fractions, you will need to simplify the fraction. Here's an example of that. If this remainder would have been a 3 instead of a 2, I would have 3 ninths. And 3 ninths is a fraction that I can simplify, meaning they both can be divided by the same factor. Okay? So this says, Sometimes you have remainders as fractions, you will need to simplify. Sometimes when you have remainders as fractions, or that should be a comma right there, you will need to simplify the fraction. Okay, so we're going to practice some more division on the back, and this time we're going to use the standard algorithm. So not place value boxes, but just standard, what you were used to maybe doing before um, the 5.1 math lesson. So turn the page. And let's try setting up the next problem, only this time um, we're going to just do a standard algorithm, okay? So the problem is 5,896, we're always going to write those diagonally, and it's divided by 2. So again, 5,896 divided by 2 is the problem. Oh, you couldn't see that the whole time. I'll give you a minute to write it and get it circled in yellow. 5,896 divided by 2. Standard algorithm means instead of having long spaces, like a long amount, I need tall, skinny space. That's what this means. So if I want to do it this way, I draw the division box. The dividend goes in the inside of it, just like if, if you imagine that was a rectangle, it would be just like that. And I don't put commas, and I still space the numbers out. That's Ms. Fisher's rule. You still space the numbers out, you don't put commas, and you make sure that this division bar goes all the way to the end, and then the divisor goes to the left. And then I start my division. So instead of doing x's, when we do standard algorithm, we're going to do um, columns. Um, actually, am I going to make you do columns? I don't think I am going to make you do columns, actually, as long as you can keep it nice and organized, OK? So 2 goes into 5. So that's where you're going to put your first answer. So you can cover everything else up and just look at the 2 into 5. 2 does go into 5, and it goes into 5 twice. So you put the 2 above the 5, because it goes in twice. And if you're doing standard algorithm, this means that I just start multiplying. I don't fill in the zeros for place values. You don't put 0, 0, 0. You just do the trick. So you go, okay, I did the, the division. 2 goes into 5 twice. And then I do multiplication. 2 times 2 is 4. So where do I write the 4? I write it underneath the 5, right there. And I'm only dealing with one number at a time. If you do standard algorithm, you're dealing with one number at a time. So let's write that actually to the side. If you use the standard algorithm. You need to do one number at a time. Okay, we're not doing the place value boxes where we fill in zeros. I'm going to put this in a red cloud. If you use the standard algorithm, which is what we're doing right now, you need to do one number at a time. So I just did the one number at a time. I did 2 goes into 5 twice, and 2 times 2 is 4, and now I subtract 5 minus 4. What is 5 minus 4? It's a 1. 
this is my leftover. But when I do standard algorithm, do you remember bring down? So you divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. Let's write all those up here. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. I do a little BB. So you divide, which we already did. You multiply, we just did. Two times two is four. We subtract and we bring down the next number. Okay, this is if you're doing standard algorithm. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. It's very similar to place value boxes because we do divide, multiply, subtract, and then we move leftovers. This time we just bring a number down. So you only bring one number at a time and you have to show me the arrow. I bring that eight down and now I start the whole process the whole loop over again only this time I'm ignoring the top numbers and I just go like this how many times I start divide how many times will two you always go back to the divisor will two go into 18 well it goes into 18 nine times so I place the nine in the next place value available which is above the eight. And I did division and now I'm doing multiplication. What is two times nine? Remember you're going one number at a time. It's 18. So I write 18 and I subtract. And I get zero, but I'm not done. I have to bring down the other, the next number. This is the process of standard algorithm. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. So you bring down the next number. And it's a nine. Two, I start over, two goes into nine. Four times, so the four gets written on the quotient line in the next place. And two times four is eight. So I'm always bringing it down to subtract. Nine minus eight is one. And that would be my remainder, except for I still have another number to bring down. So I bring down the six. Notice how I'm drawing the arrows on everything and making it organized. And my last question is, two goes into 16 eight times. So I write the eight on the quotient line because that's my answer. Two goes into 16 eight times. And I multiply, two times eight is 16. And I subtract. And I'm left with what? Zero. Are there any more numbers to bring down? Nope. So we're going to write this. Keep going until there are no more numbers to bring down. I'm actually going to say keep going until there aren't any more numbers to bring down. Again, it says keep going until there aren't any more numbers to bring down. I'm going to put that in a yellow box. Keep going until there aren't any more numbers to bring down. Will you color all of the arrows yellow? Notice how the first one is short. The second one gets a little longer. The third one is really long. It's because I'm passing all of these place values. And I get my final remainder, which is zero. So in this case, the answer is just 2,948. There is not a remainder. There is not a remainder. If there was a number here other than zero, that would be considered the remainder. Okay, hopefully that makes sense.
we're doing a lot we're doing a lot of practice with division today that is just what the plan is so hopefully you are paying attention and you're ready to do the next one um the one i would like to try is let me make sure we haven't done it already yeah ready let's do standard algorithm with it but write it sideways first five thousand eight hundred fifty seven divided by seven five thousand eight hundred fifty seven divided by seven I know doing division with this delay in the video can be kind of hard so if you need to just solve the problem and then see if you got the same answer as me that would be okay with me So in the dividend box goes five, eight, five, seven. The divisor goes on the outside. Five, eight, five, seven with the divisor on the outside. Okay, and we begin. Seven will not go into the first number. It will not go into five. Remember, you're just doing one number at a time. You're not looking at it as 5,000. You're just looking at it as one number. Seven won't go into five, so I'm going to place a little X there. But 7 will go into 58, and 7 times what gets us close to 58? 7 times 9 would be 63, that's too much. 7 times 8 would be 56, that's close. So I put an 8 in the place value that I'm talking about, which is right there. 7 times 8 is 56, and subtract it. And bring down. Now you're looking at 7 into 25, so you start over. Why am I looking at 25? Because that's the new number. I'm not looking at these numbers on top anymore. 25 is the new number. 7 goes into 25. 4 times would be 28. That's too much. 3 times is 21. So 3 goes on my answer line in the next place value. And 21 goes under the 25 and you subtract it. Your next arrow should bring down, bring it long, should bring down the 7. And I start all over again. 7 goes into 47 six times, which would be 42. 6 then goes on top because it's your answer. What was 7 times 6? That's 42, so I subtract it from 47. I bring down the next number. There's nothing to bring down. So I check, I stop and check. Could five truly be a remainder? Yes. It's smaller than seven. So my first answer, like a fourth grader, is 836 remainder five. But then I would come right to the side and I would write it like a fifth grader. 836 is the quotient. The remainder is 5, which means I want to change it into a fraction. So I put 5 as the numerator, because the remainder is the numerator, and 7 as the denominator, because the de denominator is supposed to be the divisor. 5 sevenths. Will you color the 5 yellow and the 7 red and show me where you got the 7? From over here as the divisor. Okay, so that is just a review of how to do standard algorithm with division. One of them that doesn't have a remainder means it ends in zero. One of them that does have a remainder, which means it ends at five. So in the next video, we will be using um, a page from your workbook. So in the next video, I want you to go find page 195. It says unit five, lesson one, work with remainders. Again, it's page 195. And I'll see you in the next video.